this is a very 90s phenomenon. We have um, live TV here. And then if you can get a picture of Lars's face, he's got the glow of the world clap as he's like watching TV. Within TV, it's a Shakespearean thing. Uh, quarter finals of the World Cup of Denmark versus Brazil. And um, uh, what team are you going for, Lars? Uh, <laughs> Canada. Oh, <they> didn't <laughs> make it. Sorry. You guys are in town. Um, uh, you're going to be playing tonight at the Molson Amphitheater. And your most recent album is Reload. And uh, the predecessor a couple years was Load. What's the correlation? What's the connection between these two albums? There are all the songs were written at the same time. And uh, we basically wanted to have a double CD, but ran out of time and patience. And uh, so we split them in half. Very so. different sounds of albums, though. Um, what sort of, uh, was there a progression from like, okay, you had the 27 songs. Was there a progression between that time of the first batch and the second batch? What sort of new things were you exploring? I think we might have just had a little more time to, to think about the other songs, the songs that didn't make it on load, uh, that weren't finished, you know. So uh, I guess we took into, uh, I guess, some of the, the load production. We kind of were thinking a little more about, you know, when it came time to the reload stuff. There was rewriting of some lyrics and redoing of a couple songs. Longer songs, too. Some people feel that this is a bit, bit more classically um, kind of uh, metal, more classically... Um, well, it's just, it's just how they were split up. Yeah. I mean, the songs on load were finished first, and you usually start with the kind of shorter, mm -hmm. little maybe easier songs when you're first in the studio, especially. You know, we haven't been in the studio for five years, and uh, so Brazil scored. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And you, since I'll the answer beginning, all questions, that's fine. I know, I'm going to direct them to you. So in 90, 1981, when you started in Los Angeles, you're outsiders in the glam metal scene, and you, you sort of were one of the first bands to sort of... Uh, cut our about, hair. Yeah, we'll cut your hair, yeah. And talk about sort of the conformity within metal. You've always sort of had your own individual space that you've made. Uh, do you still see yourself as uh, rebels in music? I don't know if rebels is our kind of moniker, but we've always done things our way and had the you attitude, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is hilarious. Just, what do you think? Just continue. Just, the U.S. is long gone, so, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, we've, uh, we've always done it our way. And uh, definitely when you get, when you look at it, metal got a little constricting. It was choking us. There were a few... You know, there were rules you, you had to go by, you know, to be really metal and all this. And uh, we're musicians. We're out to please ourselves, basically. It's, um, it's really a combination of honesty and selfishness, what yeah. this whole thing is, really. <laughs> honesty and selfishness. Right. So what is good music to you? Well, something that'll move me, whether it's lyrically or guitar-wise or just as a song, you know, uh, uh, construction-wise. Um, I think we're a little more open to different kinds of music and seeing the good bits in all all, uh, all kinds of music. So you listen to all sorts of stuff? Um, I'll, I'll listen to, uh, I've gotten on this um, big rockabilly craze right now for some reason. Well, you do have, a, have very much like a country feel to your delivery. Like when, when you pair it, when you unplug the instruments, suddenly I hear like a country, a country band somewhere inside there. When you unplug the instruments, <laughs> that means we've gone too far from the amp. It came unplugged. Yeah. But uh, uh, we've always, I've always, I mean, even some of the earlier stuff was written on acoustic guitar and, you know, played on electric. But uh, usually when you're sitting around the house, there's an acoustic sitting there. And uh, we've explored a little bit of that. You've got a very, like, you've always had a very um, intense kind of dark thing about the band. <laughs> And um, I, I'm wondering, uh, what, what is that? What is that intensity rooted in? What it, What is that? Thing? Confusion, anger, uh, just uh, uh, the struggle of life, you know. Confusion, anger, struggle, chaos. Uh, quite a bit of that at our shows, yeah. Is there um, any joy there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's it's hidden in there. I mean, it's not. You know, a lot of the lyrics aren't just blatant about either one. Mm -hmm. There's a. You get a, a, a little vague, so it's a little more universal, and people can attach it to themselves easily. Mm -hmm. Easily. Is. Does it ever get crazy when you're performing? You know, because you're yeah. exuding this thing, <laughs> and people are are mirroring mirroring it back to you. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely times when you're not feeling uh, maybe 100%. So you go, you'll grab a the fan, you know, 
and, and you'll kind of suck all of his energy out. Use it a bit and then go find someone else and you're kind of just pulling and pushing and there's there's just definitely a, a, a tension and a, a energy going back and forth. Yeah, does it ever get too intense for you when you're playing? No. No. Okay, well we're gonna take a, a glimpse at one of the um, uh, earlier cut, well, something from 1993, For Whom the Bell Tolls, and this is an example of some of the frenzied stuff that happens when you guys perform. Back with James and Lars after this. <laughs> So um, there's been so many different reactions to your music. There's some people that go, Metallica saved my life. And then on the other hand, there have been uh, tragic things that have happened to people in which Metallica was intrinsic to these tragedies. Like, do you ever feel a responsibility to your fans as to the messages that you're sending out? Uh, no, never, never ever. Uh, I mean, once you start, uh, when you start worrying about what you're writing about or uh, you start compromising your true feelings, really, or your creativity, and it's just—it's just another way to, you know, stop what really needs to come out. So you've got to write what you feel, and uh, if some idiot somewhere wants to take it as gospel and and, and go use it and and uh, in a bad way, and they deserve whatever they whatever they get. Mm -hmm. yeah. In this case, we were talking about the songs sort of tapping into chaos and horror and struggle. Do you feel like you're still going through that sort of stuff and putting that out? Everyone does. I mean, that's what life really is. It's a continual struggle uh, for satisfaction, for uh, something uh, something better. So, uh, yeah, always. You know, you never write the ultimate song you think you have, and then you, you want to go on and on, and uh, that's what it's about. We have a caller on the line, Jaster. <laughs> Jester, you got a big fan base outside. Um, Jester from uh, Labrador City in Labrador. You have a question for the boys? Uh, yes, I do. Okay, what is it? Uh, I was wondering what your favorite movies are. What? <laughs> your favorite movies? Oh, favorite movies. Uh, the Good, Bad, and the Ugly. That's a really good. I know. And it's really bad and it's really ugly. <laughs> and ugly. <laughs> uh, like Taxi Driver, Scarface, Runaway Train. Kind of action, action, uh, action type films. And Lars, just um, Godfather Part Two, uh, Kneel by Mouth. Um, Were you guys big Fantasia fans? No, I'm not into <laughs> comics. Soon stuff, to right? be. I'll have the Disney collection. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy the movie The Satan Killer. The who? The Satan Killer. But ask Kirk about that type of stuff. <laughs> Is, that really really <laughs> Is that a new show? Uh, no. Uh, and I was wondering if I can ask you a question. Yeah, man. Uh, have you ever been interested in coming to Labrador caribou hunting? Uh, yeah, where's, uh, where do you live? Uh, <laughs> way northeast in Canada. All right. Yeah, you can chain one outside for me. I'll be right over. <laughs> I can mail one. Shoot. Oh, my God. Which brings us to the title, Load and Reload. You're a big, um, you're a big hunter? Are you a big hunter guy? I like to hunt, but that's not the... That's not the whole meaning behind the Reload, no. This is a hunting album. This is an album Secretly, to go hunting yes. to. Absolutely. But that's just a, one of the many hobbies, outdoor hobbies that we all have. Yeah. So um, uh, do you, so you support gun laws in the States, or how do you feel about I, You know, people should take responsibility for themselves. Mm -hmm. that's the, you know, if that's the basic law of, of all humans, I think everything would turn out pretty OK. <laughs> but. So. Uh, Sometimes you strike me like I, I've never met you before, but like the stuff that I've read about you and like your stance, you're like like the Thor guy, <laughs> and then and then I read about like your rifle stuff, and then um, lover of nature, and you don't vote, is that right? You don't do you vote or? You know, uh, it's it's this is. Uh, is this a song about or this? Uh, 
basically we're here to talk about music. I mean, politics and crap like that, I don't like mm-hmm. mixing music and politics together. Right. Uh, someone's certain beliefs uh, don't, you know, we're here to play music. Uh, when we go play certain countries, there's always these political questions, you know, oh, aren't you here to save the kids and all this, you know, we're here to play music, you know, and it's just one of our feelings that we're trying to get out. And, and I think uh, other c- celebrities or, 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 or figures that use their popularity to promote certain uh, political causes, is, I think, I feel it's wrong. Or beliefs? Just because they're popular doesn't mean they're smart most of the time, yeah. you know. Right. Okay, um, let's take, we have a question from this one. Uh, I'd just like to say uh, congratulations on the birth of your child, James. Thank you. And Lars, congratulations on the birth of your upcoming child. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering if uh, becoming a parent now has changed the way you look at music or write the music now. Something. Writing Something. music? No. <laughs> okay, close up here. Uh, On his face. <laughs> Suck dead. I know. Suck. could have made that goal. What's the matter with your boy? Anyway. Congratulations on the baby. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Does um, it change having families and stuff like that? It's going to change uh, uh, diapers. It's going to change diapers. Uh, you know, being on the road, uh, there'll be uh, a little more room made for uh, extra people coming on yeah, the road. That's the fa- all. You mean the family, the band Absolutely. has gotten bigger or your family's gotten bigger. Absolutely. So uh, I'm a believer of uh, take your luggage everywhere, you know? <laughs> the album art here, um, you, uh, we're going to be playing Until It Sleeps, and that has references to Hieronymus Bosch, the painter. And also, the, the paintings on this particular, um, two, these two albums, were by Andre Serrano. And um, it, it's kind of, do you want to explain some the, what the art is? It's like... Um, Here's the art guy right here. L- Lars? Hello? Um... <laughs> Yeah, what it is, I think, is secondary to the fact that everybody that looks at it can make up their own minds. Yeah, there's really a lot. Was, it's, it's, it's very layered. Like, on Well, the whole point really with the titles and the visuals were to have them not really mean anything specific from us. That it was like, here's a bunch of music and that's it. And everything in terms of titles and artwork and so on is something that you can figure out for yourself. You can make up your own mind, you know, what you see in it, what you want to make of it. But we wanted to try, we started kind of after the Injustice for All album, all the albums had very much like the title, the cover, everything was kind of tied into all of these records that were almost sort of, where the songs were tied lyrically. Too literal, perhaps? Yeah, it just became almost too concept-like. Yeah. And I think I was really keen on trying to get away from that. I think as James's lyrics became more and more personal, I think that the cover art and, and the name of the albums and stuff like that should mean as little as possible. And that's what those statements are. And you can make those visuals out to be whatever they are. I mean, obviously right. because of the titles of the pieces. Right. Blood semen and, and blood and yeah. urine and blood. But that, that's, that's secondary to the fact that it, it could also be a picture of the sun or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And so I was really trying to just make a sort of non-statement type of thing, just go to the music, just, it ties into what James was saying before, the about the music being the, the paramount fun. thing and everything else is a very distant secondary aspect. Okay, we're going to be back with the boys after this, this is Until It Sleeps, Mattel. And in case you're wondering why Lars is so quiet today, over there he's watching the World Cup. Brazil versus Denmark. What's the score now? Uh, I can't. I can't read the score. Brazil losing. Oh no. Uh-oh. That's the score. Do you guys like? Are you guys? Uh, do you get? Oh, do you have a training regimen that you'd go through to get ready for performing? There's there's a few uh, uh, things that individuals go through to to. Uh, make sure that they can last the two and a half hours. I always notice the thigh shot. They, they're always getting, like, you're always like this, and then, and then you see <laughs> Lars, Lars like, in the, in the background between your legs. I think there's, like, one of the... Uh, Lars is always between my legs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. 
Um, anyway. Have you ever lost your voice? Oh, it's been close, but no. You know, we've uh, kind of proud that we've never had to cancel a gig because of uh, losing wow. my voice. Wow, so. you, you're like, ah. Uh. Ah, There's a bit a of that. A lot of that stuff yeah. there. Yeah, yelling in key for two and a half hours, that's me. <laughs> and do you guys wear earplugs or anything like that? Yes, How do yes. you, oh, so you're able to... A little too late in life, but yeah. We're... <laughs> Somebody get the phone, you know, there's the ringing all the time, but... Uh... I can feel the phone ringing. Yeah. But now these boys over here have a question. All right, James. Uh, by the way, you're the greatest. Um, what do you think is like your heaviest song and what makes it so heavy? <laughs> like lyrics and... Like... Am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> yeah. Are you supposed to? You're supposed to know which song is heaviest to yeah, yourself. In your opinion, like what makes I the like, song uh, heavy? The thing that should not be, I think, is probably the ultimate in Metallica heavy. And like, what makes it so heavy? The lyrics or like the way it sounds? A combination of both. You know, tuning down, just the slow, the the slow crunch to it all. The the riff itself and the yeah, definitely the and lyrics. The lyrics do have something to do with the heaviness, right? Yeah, I think so. All right. What, 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 um, what was the inspiration behind it? The thing that should not be was, boy, um, it was a whole mythos, uh, Lovecraft mythos that Cliff and, uh, and Kirk as well were really into. And the thing that should not be was one of his creatures that was supposedly buried within the earth waiting to arise and his uh, followers are, you know, calling him. So uh, the thing that should not be was uh, one of, yeah, basically one of the characters. Wow. Do you, so are you, are you a big uh, mythology person? Do you not, read a lot not of particularly. I don't read at all, really. <laughs> you watch TV. I'd rather watch a movie. <laughs> okay, we're gonna be um, taking a look at uh, the uh, the track Fuel. Big car, lots yeah. of cars. Yes. Are you a car lover as well? I am now. That's something I missed out on as a kid. And uh, it's back with a vengeance. Right <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much for coming down. All right, And good Thank luck you. with the show tonight. Um, Days of the New, as well as, as well as Jerry Contrell at Molson Amphitheater and Yahoo. Metallica tonight in Toronto. And uh, the game as well. Boop. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Metallica <laughs> Fuel. <laughs> yeah!